Welcome to Type C Tech Reviews. Today we're going to be doing a review of the Dell U3223 QE. If at any point during the video you want to check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's jump into the monitor. All right, right off the bat, this is a 31 and a half inch monitor with a resolution of 3840 by 2160 aka 4k that's a whole lot of resolution now let's go into the ppi or pixels per inch if you don't know what that is it's basically how crisp and clear the image on the monitor is actually going to be now 4k at basically a 32 inch screen size is the perfect resolution in my professional opinion this gives you a ppi of about 138 which is very good now that means text is going to be crisp and clear very crisp and clear images are going to be beautiful crisp and clear again. So this is a really good PPI. Now, there is also a 27 inch version of this monitor and everything is the exact same. So if you are looking for the 27 inch review, this is the same review. There's only a single difference and that is the PPI. Because the resolution on the 27 inch version is the same, you do get a higher PPI. However, I think the 27 inch is overkill. 32 inches or about 32 inches at 4K is the perfect screen size matched with resolution. That being said, the 27 inch is substantially cheaper than the 32 inch, so that may be your deciding factor right there. Now, this uses an IPS panel that I believe is manufactured by LG, and it's a new panel type, very new actually, it is IPS with what they're calling black technology. Now, typically IPS panels, basically all of them have a contrast ratio of 1000 to one. And all this means is that your blacks are not really that deep in black, like a VA panel or an OLED, with those blacks being very black, like they actually look dark and black where IPS kind of has a blue tint. So this black technology increases the contrast ratio from 1000 to one to 2000 to one. Now this sounds like a 100% increase uh, in the black level, but really it's about 30% darker. So it is a very noticeably substantial difference between a typical IPS and this IPS with those black levels, which is a welcome thing. That's very cool. However, it's only 30% better and really compared to a VA panel or an OLED especially, there's still no comparing to those. Those have a way deeper black but it is darker than typical IPS panels, but it's still not like a VA panel. It's definitely an upgrade from a typical IPS panel, but it should not be the reason you're upgrading to this one, unless you have a ton of money to just waste. All right, now moving on to the refresh rate, this hits a max of 60 Hertz. Now, if you're used to productivity monitors or work monitors or Mac displays, MacBook Pros, whatever, if you're used to that, this is gonna be exactly the same as that. However, I do wish for this price point that they have upped it to 70 or 75 Hertz. I would have liked to see that. I think all office monitors should be 75 Hertz uh, for premium ones and even mid-grade ones should all have a higher refresh rate. I think it's a lot more luxurious. Uh, however, this does only have 60 Hertz, not a deal breaker, but it's something that I did wish that it had. However, 95% of you will be used to this, so it's not a problem. All right, now moving to brightness. This is advertised with 400 nits of brightness, which is a good brightness, but it's not that good, especially considering the price point. However, after testing, this outperformed the advertised by quite a lot, hitting 510 nits of brightness. That is pretty dang good. That's a lot over the advertised, which is very cool. So yes, this monitor is very nice and bright, uh, brighter than you're gonna wanna use it if you're doing color rack your work. So you're gonna have to bump that brightness down but that's pretty typical. Most productivity monitors that are mid-grade, if that's what you have right now, are gonna be hitting around 300 nits. I see most of them not really going above 300 nits unless you're going to newer premium monitors, uh, which do see higher brightnesses, but this one is great at 510 nits. This is a good, vibrant, beautiful brightness, and uh, I have no complaints at all. It's fantastic. Now, besides just actually looking stunning because of the 2000 to one contrast ratio and then pair that with the brightness, beyond just being beautiful to look at, if you're in a bright room, you have windows behind you, you have a lot of lights in your room, this is still gonna be completely fine for that. 510 nits is enough paired with the matte finish on the display to keep away basically all the reflections, which is a good thing. All right, now for HDR. This does have HDR, however, to enable HDR, uh, you actually have to turn on HDR through the menu system first, which is not really typical. Most monitors, you don't have to do that. However, you did have to do that for this one, and after testing the brightness in HDR, this thing reached a peak of 580 nits, which is very cool. So that's also even brighter than SDR, uh, and it is nice, and you do have a wide color gamut, 
So HDR is a very enjoyable experience. So that is awesome. All right, now colors. This is a big deal and it is quite good here. Now, first of all, this covers 100% of the sRGB color gamut, 100% of the Rec. 709 and 98% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. That is all quite good. However, the big thing is accuracy out of the box is very, very good. Now this thing comes pre-calibrated with a sheet showing the calibration in each box. So there's a calibration specific to each monitor that is then recorded and placed in your box with each monitor. That is very cool, but it's very accurate out of the box, which is fantastic. This means you could get this monitor, order it, have it shipped to your house, open it up, set it on your desk, and immediately start doing professional grade photo, video editing, or anything that you're going to need accuracy with colors in. That's huge. That's a really big deal. And this may be one of the deciding factors for you. It probably is. You're probably only looking at this if you need perfect colors or you have a lot of money and you just want a really nice display. Now as well, this can output 10 bits of color, which is fantastic, but we do expect that. Now, Beyond just the color accuracy, obviously you can use this for professional grade work, which is fantastic. However, how does the panel look? If you're just using it every day, you're gonna work on it, you're gonna use it for fun, you're gonna use it for everything. This is a beautiful display. Pair the beautiful colors from watching something like Netflix or YouTube or whatever you're watching, it's stunning. Pair those colors with the 2000 to one contrast ratio on an IPS, and really you're getting a very, very beautiful experience. And trust me, you're definitely paying a lot for the newest technology, but it is really good for IPS panels, as well as the fact that there's also the reliability with IPS panels and the longevity of IPS panels. If you buy an OLED, which you probably could in a similar price range, maybe a little bit more, the OLED is gonna have deeper blacks, yes, but it's gonna have burn-in eventually. All OLEDs have burn-in eventually. It's not something that might happen, it's something that does happen. So with an IPS, you could buy this and have it for gen generations, maybe. Maybe you could. IPS panels have been around for a long time. They're color accurate, they're beautiful, and they're very, reliable, you don't have to worry about them. So if I was gonna pick between an OLED and an IPS panel, I would still pick this one over an OLED. But that's just me personally, some people may not agree with that. All right, moving on to IPS Glow and Backlight Bleed. My unit had none, which is good. Nothing else to say about that. Let's move on. All right, now for response time, ghosting, and I'm gonna talk about some gaming real life experience with that. This is gonna be very quick, or you can skip to the next section. We have timestamps all below that you should be able to skip through, but let's talk about it. Okay, so the response time and ghosting. Response time hits five milliseconds, gray to gray in the fastest setting, and eight milliseconds gray to gray in the normal setting. Now, the fastest setting has a ton of pixel overshooting and inverse ghosting. Don't ever use it, it's terrible. Normal is the one you should set it in. There's only two response time settings. Now, with the eight millisecond gray to gray, there is ghosting, but for this kind of monitor, it's actually not bad. You can definitely game on this thing as far as ghosting, which is a very good thing. And I did actually do quite a bit of gaming on this and my overall experience was very good. Now, I didn't do competitive style gaming. I played a game called Hell Let Loose. It's more of a World War II, kind of like a simulation, but kind of not. It's casual, it's fun, it's a little bit slower paced, and it was absolutely enjoyable because of that 4K resolution and those beautiful colors and the deeper blacks from the IPS with black technology. Now again, I don't wanna say that the blacks are as deep as the VA panel, they're not, but they were noticeably darker and it made the experience really enjoyable overall. Now, this is not a gaming panel, but 4K gaming, it was fun on it. The only thing is that it had quite a bit of screen tearing. There was quite a bit of screen tearing. However, because it was a slower style game, I didn't mind it too much. If I was playing something competitive, it might've bugged me quite a bit, uh, but in that kind of game, it didn't. And so it was overall really enjoyable. If you want a game on this thing, on the side, sometimes plug an Xbox in, it's great for that. It really is. It works well, but it's not a gaming monitor but it does work well. All right, now moving to the menu system and controls. Dell always does good and they always do bad with their menu system and controls. So it's kind of a mixed bag here. Same thing as all the other monitors. Now, a couple of things. One thing that I absolutely love that Dell almost does every time on all of theirs, they have a dedicated power button for on and off. That's awesome because it's easy to turn on, it's easy to turn off just with one click. A lot of monitors, you gotta go into the menu system or you gotta hold one of the buttons. This one's way better, but on the flip side, it's in a bad placement. A lot of Dell's gaming monitors have it on the front. It's got a little tiny LED on it. It's very easy to see. This one, it's all the way in the back. So you have to reach behind and then kind of like feel around for it because you don't know exactly where it is. Uh, so it's a bad placement overall and you have to reach behind the monitor it's not a good placement. Then they have a joystick to control the menu. The joystick is good, it's easy to use, 
it's responsive, there's no learning curve to it. It's easy, except for the fact you have to reach behind the monitor. It's in a terrible placement, I hate it. However, moving on to the menu system itself, it's functional. There is a ton of stuff that you can configure and change and go into. There's a ton of different menus uh, in that menu system that you can change. So that is really cool. I do like that because if people wanna be more nitpicky, they can, but it's easy to find the basic stuff, your brightness and contrast and stuff like that. So that is pretty cool. But Dell's menu system is not the prettiest in the game. It's just about average with how it looks. Now, when talking about the menu system, we're also gonna talk about picture and picture and picture by picture. This does have that and it's easy to get to in the menu system, easy to change and configure all of that. And if you don't know what picture and picture and picture by picture is, it's just being able to hook up two different things. So if you wanna put your Xbox and your MacBook Pro into the same display, you can you know display them in different squares or half the screen or whatever you wanna do. You can do that uh, if you want to and it doesn't have to be an Xbox, it can be a PC and then a Mac or two PCs or two Macs or whatever you wanna do. Uh, so that's what you can do there. Now as well, very cool thing is this has mouse, keyboard and video KVM, which is absolutely essential for productivity athletes. This means that you can use your single mouse keyboard and video, like for Zoom or whatever, you can use that between different devices on the same monitor, that is awesome. All right, now moving to the ports, this is absolutely fantastic here, as you would expect. Now I'm not even gonna attempt to memorize this because there's a lot, so I'm gonna be reading it off. There is one HDMI, one DisplayPort 1.4 in, then a DisplayPort out, and a USB Type-C with 90 watts of charging being an upstream port, then a downstream USB-C and a whopping four USB type A 3.2 Gen 2s, that is awesome, a three and a half millimeter audio out, then an ethernet port. And if you thought I was done, I am not. Then there is another USB type A and another USB type C downstream in a more accessible location, which I absolutely love. Dell has done this on a lot of their other monitors. So basically this other section is in the left side right underneath, so not all the way behind the monitor where most of the ports are. This is fantastic. Charging from these, from those two ports, there's not gonna be a ton of charging from them, but you can charge using those two ports without having anything plugged in. That's something that LG doesn't do on basically any of their monitors. I use wireless headsets all the time. I was plugging it in with that port all the time and it was so easy, so fantastic. And this is just one of those great things that this monitor excels at. That's a ton of ports to basically do whatever you need to do. If you wanna plug your MacBook Pro in with a single port, but also have your Xbox displayed on the screen, you can do that. The ports allow you to do basically everything you want to. And you're never gonna be like, oh, I can't do this. Now, the other very cool thing is that this thing can actually be daisy chained to another monitor also displaying 4K resolution. That means you can take this monitor, plug your PC into it, and then plug the monitor to another monitor and also have a 4K resolution. So rather than plugging your PC into two displays, you can daisy chain this monitor to another monitor that is very cool, especially again for productivity athletes. Now the stand and build quality, well, it's absolutely perfect for what this monitor is. It is strong, elegant, very stable, and quite heavy. The monitor itself has small bezels around three edges and then a small chin, but slightly bigger. Uh, however, on the front, there is no branding except one very small uh, Dell logo on the bottom of the stand. And I think that's basically perfect. It's elegant, it's not in your face, I like it a lot. But all that's fine, but the perfect part is the functionality. This has height adjustability. It has tilt. It then has swivel, and there's quite a lot of it too. And then it has rotation to go completely vertical. Now this basically means you can move this any which way you want to. You can basically configure uh, the way this is turned any way you want to for this monitor with the ports, with the resolution, all this stuff, daisy chaining, everything like that. The whole idea of this is to be able to let you work the way you want to with this monitor. And the stand achieves that by basically giving you every type of functionality it can, which is great. Now it also has uh, a cable channel in the back of the monitor so you can route all your cables in there easily. It works well. I wish it was a little bit higher up because you can kind of see the cables sometimes, 
but not a big deal. However, let's move on to the price. This is not usually a section, but it is with this monitor. Now the 32 inch version comes in at $1,150 and the 27 inch comes in at $820. Those are both very expensive monitors, but there's a substantial price difference between the exact same monitor and a different screen size. That's a substantial difference between the 27 inch and the 32. And let me remind you, every single stat, the stand, what comes in the box, all of it is exactly the same except for the PPI is higher on the 27 inch because it's the same resolution, but a smaller screen. So that price difference is very substantial. Now, personally, which one is my favorite? Well, it's the 32 inch. I think the resolution is perfect on that monitor. However, if I was the one buying this and I was gonna use this as my daily monitor forever or for the next few years, I would probably pick the 27 inch because it's a big price gap between the two. However, you're just gonna have to weigh what is important to you. If you are a big picture in picture, picture by picture, the 32 inch is a no questions. That's what you're gonna pick. So it really comes up to your personal preference. But overall, do I recommend this monitor? Well, if you need great color accuracy, high resolution, ports and connectivity for days and the latest IPS black technology, then absolutely, this is a fantastic monitor. Again, if you wanna check it out, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links to both the 27 inch and the 32 inch version. Now this is a steeply priced monitor, but it is fantastic if you have the money for it. And if you're one of those people that absolutely need a ton of productivity in their lives and you want the best, most beautiful high end panel, this is really, really good. And the only reason that you wouldn't like this is because of the price. And also if you wanna see an unboxing of this exact same monitor when I got it, there will be a little box right here. Click on the video right there if you wanna see the unboxing, but this is Type-C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.